Sir, for the uh, evening session is Dr. Harshita Sridhar, our head uh, department of emergency medicine. She is going to uh, speak on anaphylaxis, how to prepare ourselves to handle uh, patients who come with anaphylaxis. Over to you, Dr. Harshita. Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Harshita. Uh, so, today's session is uh, held by Manipal groups uh, talking about common emergencies. So, I started off with a question to say, are we prepared to handle common, em common emergencies? So, I'm, uh, I head the emergency department at Manipal Millers Road and today I want to talk about one part of that emergency, medical emergency that is anaphylaxis and the question is are we prepared to handle anaphylactic reactions. So, what is anaphylaxis? So, this is a severe allergic reaction. You know that it is a very rapid onset, it uh, progresses fast. In many cases we have heard about death due to anaphylaxis and this requires an emergent uh, diagnosis and treatment. So, what kind of a response is this? It's a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. It's an immune mediated reaction. As you can see in the image, the antigens, these are could be any common uh, not harmless antigens that can activate the B cells releasing the immunoglobulin IgE. This goes and coats the uh, mast cells and when the allergen is again exposed in the body, they bind these IgEs and release the degranulation of the mast cells releasing the histamines and the other mediators. These mediators increase the permeability of the vessels causing all the reactions that we see. And these reactions can anywhere be from mild to severe reactions. So, I want to start with a case report. So, there was a 40 year old healthy woman, no apparent medical condition. She was admitted for an abdominal hysterectomy. She denied any drug allergies and uh, passed adverse reactions to any uh, anesthetic drugs. Her physical examination was normal, vitals were normal. She was taken up to the OT. And 20 minutes after induction, she was given propofol, lidocaine, fentanyl and rocuronium. She suddenly developed a hypotension response and a bronchospasm. She required ventilatory support, fluids, epinephrine and after 48 hours she was extubated and then she was retaken to the OT. During the process, they had done a uh, skin test and they found that she was probably allergic to fentanyl. So, the whole purpose of telling you this case report is that we always plan something for our patients and we say yeah we are going to give this drug and this is how it is going to go and lead to but suddenly there can be a U-turn, there could be another response or a reaction which we need to be aware and we need to know how to deal here. So taking this forward, what are the common causes of anaphylaxis? Uh, food allergies are common, milk, soya, uh, egg, fish allergies are common, insect bites, bee, uh, ants. Uh, medication, technically you name any medication, a person can be allergic, but common antibiotics are penicillin and beta-lactam groups, uh, NSAIDs, aspirins uh, are common uh, medications that the patient can be allergic to. Uh, latex, exercises and a good chunk of it comes under the unknown causes or the idiopathic causes. So there was an Asian study which identified the uh, etiology spread. 34% is food allergy, but 37% were the unknown causes. Then you had 20% come because of the drugs, 7% came from exercise and 2% came from other uh, rubber and uh, insect bites and so on. So here is another case report of an unusual uh, anaphylactic reaction. A 34 year old man, he presented to the emergency room with urticaria, hypotension and shortness of breath. And all that he could say is he went in for a cold, I mean he went in for a shower and then after a hot shower he came out and the weather was extremely cold, he got exposed to a cold weather and then he comes to the emergency room in a crashing situation. So here this patient did not respond to, to intramuscular adrenaline, then he required adrenaline infusion to get his hypotension settled. He was admitted in the ICU for some time, he was found to have a positive ice cube test and then this probably confirmed that exposure to cold caused the anaphylactic reaction. So again, here I want to insist that things can present very unusual to us. So the common signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis from conjunctival swelling to tearing of the eye, angioedema, lip swelling, tongue swelling which can present to us uh, uh, with significant airway compromises, uh, heart, heart, uh, heart situations where the patient can have high heart rate, low heart rate, hypotension, skin rashes which is commonly seen, all the urticaric rashes that you are all aware pelvic pain to loss of uh, bladder control to abdominal cramps, vomiting, shortness of breath, strider, wheeze, these are all the presentations of uh, allergic reactions. So what is the clinical criteria for identifying or diagnosing anaphylaxis in your setup? 
So a patient comes with urticaric rash but also can have respiratory distress or hypotension or, uh, or associated symptoms of other organ dysfunction. So urticaria with any of these can indicate anaphylaxis. Another way to look at it is you have four signs and any two present you can think of anaphylaxis. That can be skin involvement, respiratory compromise, hypotension or persistent GI symptoms. So what is the treatment? It's emergencies always we talk about airway stabilization, breathing and circulation. So put the, look, watch for the airway compromise, any stridors, start the patient on oxygen, ensure the patient's saturation is above 94%. Then the drug of choice in anaphylaxis is adrenaline. So after adrenaline, you have the other choices, that's fluids, antihistamines, bronchodilators and hydrocortisone. We'll discuss that in the next slides. So adrenaline is, as I said, the drug of choice. Why is it? The natural antidote to an anaphylactic reaction in your body is to release the adrenaline. This helps to combat the reaction uh, released due to the, all the histamine and other mediators that are causing the problem in your anaphylactic reaction. So we inject this adrenaline so that it assists the body's natural response. But unfortunately, I mean, many observational studies have shown that uh, that we use adrenaline, we underuse adrenaline and often uh, dosed it suboptimally. And when we discharge patients also, we do not advise for the uh, potential future use. Over here, we are talking more about use of EpiPen, but here, uh, unfortunately, we don't have that access at the moment, but we should probably start talking about it and start utilizing adrenaline.